today I'm going to take a look at Superhuman, the email tool that cost me $30 per month. That might sound crazy when you can get Gmail for free, but stick with me here because I'm going to show you today why it's totally worth it. This type of video is going to be a new style for me. I'm not only going to take a look at the product itself, but also the company backstory and where I think they're headed. This type of analysis is useful for people like entrepreneurs, investors, and product managers. And even if you're only a customer, knowing the trajectory of a product could help you make a decision on whether to use it or whether to jump ship because you'll know whether it has a likelihood of being around in two, three, or four years. If you're just here for the product review, you can go to the timestamp on screen right now. Long before Superhuman, Rahul Vora wanted to make email better. He spent hours a day inside his Gmail inbox as a busy entrepreneur, and he wasn't totally satisfied with the experience that he had. Rahul wanted to reduce friction in looking up people he was contacting, so he launched Reportive. It was a Gmail extension that showed a sidebar with information like somebody's profile picture, their LinkedIn URL, their website URL, and their Twitter profile, so that they could more easily look up people straight from the Gmail inbox. Reportive was so popular that it was the first Gmail extension to reach 1 million users. After about two years, LinkedIn acquired the product and rolled it into their sales navigator offering. But Rahul remained bothered by a persistent problem within Gmail, and that was that its interface got slower and slower over time. He also read a report by McKinsey that said that the average professional spends three hours a day on email, and there are one billion professionals. It was a staggering figure. People are spending three billion hours on email every single weekday. Rahul knew that he had to do something about it. Enter Superhuman. It's designed to be the fastest email experience in the world. And speed is perhaps its most important feature. The interface has very few buttons. Instead, you're supposed to learn keyboard shortcuts, which enable you to blaze through the interface. Interactions in Superhuman are designed to last 100 milliseconds or less, the point at which things feel instantaneous. Now compare that to Gmail, where almost everything you do lags. What's interesting is that Superhuman has the exact same keyboard shortcuts as Gmail, but the difference is that Superhuman practically forces you to use the keyboard, so you learn the shortcuts and then you become more efficient just because you know your way around with a keyboard instead of a mouse. When we use our mouses, we tend to go slower because we're always hunting around for the right button and we end up over our lifetime spending days just moving the mouse around trying to find the right thing. Think about it like this. You're probably a power user and you most likely know the keyboard shortcuts for cut, copy, paste, and undo. But there are people in your life who don't know these keyboard shortcuts and teaching them the shortcuts would be something close to life-changing. That's what Superhuman is like. Superhuman has a lot of keyboard shortcuts and the engineers know that you're probably not going to remember every single shortcut. That's why they created the Superhuman command. Inspired by Spotlight on the Mac, you can invoke the Superhuman command with the keyboard shortcut command K. From there, you can do pretty much anything just by typing the name of what you're trying to do. Want to toggle dark mode? Want to add a BCC? Want to unsubscribe from a newsletter or send a message to spam? You can do all of this and so much more with the Superhuman command. But Superhuman is much more than Gmail without buttons. It's designed to get you to inbox zero every single day without letting things fall through the cracks. And it does it through a concept called triage. Instead of just glancing at the inbox and picking out the important items, with Superhuman, you're supposed to take action on the inbox itself. Here's what I mean. Here's this message from Elon. I know it's important, so I'm going to click S to star it so I can come back in a bit. Next, here's a newsletter from Rahul. I'm going to click H so I can remind myself to read it on the weekend. This message will come back into my inbox on Saturday morning. Next, here's somebody who wants an invite to Superhuman. I'm going to refer him now. 
This is a newsletter I'd rather not receive anymore. I'm going to pull up the superhuman command and unsubscribe. Then I'll just delete the message. This person wants me to introduce someone to Jeff. I'm going to use the instant intro feature to BCC the referrer. Then I'll add Jeff as the recipient. Oh crap, I forgot to say something. No big deal. I'm just gonna hit Z within the first 10 seconds after sending the email, which will undo sending and bring it back into editing mode. Also, I wanna make sure Jeff follows up as I know he's a little busy right now. So I'm gonna resurface this email after three days if nobody replies. This person wants to get a coffee. Let's try Thursday. Oops, a little busy that day. How about Friday? Awesome. They're currently in London, so I will set this email to send out tomorrow morning in their time zone. Done. And finally, I've triaged to inbox zero, save for that email that's now in important. And what I get as a reward is a beautiful, calming image that changes every single day. The superhuman founders claim that many of their customers see inbox zero for the first time in years. It feels so rewarding and satisfying to see that nature image every single day, knowing that I got through everything without letting anything slip through the cracks. There's more to the product, but I think you get the idea. It's super optimized for speed and getting things done. That's why it's worth $30 per month. Very few great companies get to where they are without having a major misstep and Superhuman is no exception. In the middle of 2019, they were getting a lot of press following a big round of funding. And it surfaced at the time that the product included a feature that many would consider invasive. The feature is called read statuses, and here's how it works. Normally, when you send an email, you have no way of knowing whether the recipient even opened the email. But if you insert something called a tracking pixel, you can know this information and potentially a lot more. Your email client, such as Superhuman, will include a tiny one pixel by one pixel image in the email. When the email is opened, it pings a remote server to start downloading the image. That's the trick. When the server gets the download request, it knows the email was opened. The server also knows the client's IP address, which can be used to approximate their real world location. Superhuman added a tracking pixel to their offering and it was enabled by default for every single user. So anytime a superhuman user sent an email to somebody, they would open the email and they would be tracked even without opting in. But Superhuman did not let bad press destroy them. The CEO swiftly made a public apology and vowed to as quickly as possible fix the tracking pixel so that it was much less invasive. The first thing they did was disable the tracking pixel for all users. So anyone still wanting to use it would have to manually turn it back on. They also removed the logging of location data. That meant that if you still wanted to use the tracking pixel, you could no longer see where the person was located, only when they opened their email. The company even went so far as to add a tracking blocking feature to the superhuman client. So that way, if a superhuman user got a superhuman or any other tracking pixel, they could block it by default. If you ask me, I think the whole thing might have been blown a tad out of proportion. Not because superhuman wasn't wrong to include a tracking pixel with so much information, but because so many other pieces of software also include read statuses. The CRM software HubSpot and many others have tracking pixels, and marketing software like Drip and MailChimp also include this feature. I just don't see the same level of outcry with these pieces of software like we did with Superhuman and there's tracking pixels still included in millions of emails every single day. Again, nothing really excuses any of these companies from using tracking pixels and it really comes down to ethics. Should companies be tracking people or should they not? But it just goes to show how few people are really educated about issues of privacy and how we can probably do a lot more to get people thinking in this area. I love Superhuman the product, but I have to say I'm a bit concerned about Superhuman the company over the long term. 
I checked out their fundraising history on Crunchbase. In 2019, they raised a $33 million Series B round, which put them at a post-money valuation of around $260 million. For the layman, that means that some rich guys in the 2019 version of Silicon Valley thought that the company was worth about $260 million and that the company would grow aggressively. When that fundraising round closed in the summer of 2019, there was a New York Times article that came out talking about the company. One of the things that it mentioned was that at the time, the company had 15,000 users using the product. Well, I saw another article from this year, from April 2021, that claimed that the company had 20,000 people using the product. So, if that article is correct, the company grew from 15,000 users in 2019 following a huge Series B round to 20,000 users two years later. Something really just doesn't line up there to me. Let's run some numbers and assume that 20,000 user figure is correct. If 20,000 users are paying $30 a month, that puts the company's annual revenue at about $7 million. That means that their valuation is about 35 times their revenue. Now valuation itself is a complicated thing. There are many cool tech companies as well as very established companies that are trading at or valued at many times their current revenue. So the valuation itself is not really the problem. The issue is that they got a series B investment with a huge valuation, a huge influx of cash, yet their apparent user growth since that series B seems to be very tepid. The product is still missing features they said they would implement soon two years ago. The most notable being support for email services that are not Gmail or Google Workspace. So if you use an email service that's not from Google, you cannot really use Superhuman. Unless Superhuman has something really big up its sleeves, I just fail to see how they're gonna achieve breakout growth. Gmail has more than 1.5 billion users, and obviously they're not going for that market. But even Slack, which was supposed to be the email killer, has around 13 million daily active users. Now I get that they're not really going for this ultimate growth anymore, but it just seems really out of phase with raising a lot of money and then focusing on a very good product for a very niche set of users that has a very small rate of growth. With all of this being said, I am an outsider looking at a private company. I have no knowledge of the actual fundamentals. That April article citing 20,000 users could be totally wrong. Their current user base could be 10x as much and I would have no idea. All I hope is that Superhuman figures out how to stick around because they're creating a truly excellent product and even if it doesn't achieve mass success, it is truly great for a certain user base that meets certain criteria. If you wanna step up your email game, seriously consider giving Superhuman a try. It's infinitely more expensive than Gmail, but if you value your time and you wanna keep things from slipping through the cracks ever again, Superhuman might be the right tool for you. The first step to get started is to fill out a survey to see if you meet the criteria and for Superhuman to learn a little bit more about your workflow. Assuming you meet the criteria that they can actually support you, Somebody will be in touch and they'll put you through a half hour onboarding where they can show you the software and they'll make sure that it's set up right for your workflow. Now, if you end up not liking Superhuman within the first month, they'll give you a refund. So there's really nothing lost if you end up trying the product and not liking it. Also, I can get you a free month of Superhuman. They don't do the referral code or referral link thing. I actually need to refer you from within the app but if you send me your email, I can make that happen. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a short survey in the description of this video. It's just gonna ask you your name and your email address, and I'll try to quickly respond to the survey by putting you in touch with the Superhuman team so you can get that first month off. The only thing I want you to know is that if I refer you and you get the free month, 
I may also get a free month of service. Note that this video was in no way sponsored by Superhuman. I'm a person who pays for the product. I'm just giving you my opinions about the product itself as well as where I think the company is headed. If you like this kind of video or if you have any feedback about how we can make it even better, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.